Hiya loves, I'm Riyadh, welcome back to my channel and I'm sorry that there's been a bit of a gap. As a lot of you know, I'm in the middle of making my own BBC3 series, which is absolutely insane to even say, but because I've been doing that filming all over the UK, um, I've been taken away from my camera and I have just been sleeping any hour of the day that we're not making that show. But today I'm doing a video that a lot of you have asked for. I'm about to turn 26, so why not do 25 life lessons I've learned in 25 years. This is not wine by the way, this is tea in a wine glass. Why? Because it makes me feel fab. It's vital that I give you a disclaimer before we get into this. The life lessons in this video may lead to you losing your job, family, friends and lover. I'm not responsible for the actions that lead to you making a shit of your life, unless of course that shit makes your life better, in which case you can thank me with many many gifts and wine. The people and events about to be mentioned are real but shall remain nameless because nobody steals my attention apart from Oprah. Oprah is queen. First thing, never attempt a sneaky silent fart. Like a good lactose intolerant person, I decided, focus, I'll have all the cheese. So what happens then? You begin to produce gas. And I'm not talking about a little bit of gas, I'm talking about enough gas to fill up the fucking Hindenburg. Inside the silver envelope are 16 separate gas bags. So I'm sitting in this car, I'm trapped. I think, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it. I'm just gonna hold it in. Just, you know. I squeeze really tight. <laughs> and then let it. <laughs> Ooh, and then I'll let a little bit out at a time, you know, it's like a... The first little bit escaped me. Perfect, no one heard. I've gotten away with it. Almost three seconds pass and the car begins to smell like an abandoned morgue. And there's no escaping it. And then for the rest of your days, you're seen by that person as the filthy stinking bastard that likes to fart in cabs that are sealed. My advice, own it. If you feel it coming, tell the person, hey you, something's about to go down. You've got two options. Leave the area or stay and enjoy my scent. Be nice to dickheads. It sounds harder than it is, but if someone's being an asshole to you, hit them with the friendly stick. About two weeks ago, I was in a nightclub. I brushed shoulders with someone that I don't know. The person turns around and does this. Mm -mm. Can we have a slow-mo replay on that? Mm -mm. Instantly, my dickhead alarm is going off and I think, what can I do with this person? I could get angry and say, calm down, love, relax. But I said, are you having a bad day? Are you feeling a little bit shit? What's going on? Talk to me. Talk, 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 talk to me. Now instantly what you do in that situation is you take the power from the dickhead and all of a sudden they feel like a dickhead for being a dickhead. I just said, look, we're all here to have a good time. We're in a nightclub. How about... We just smile, huh? Huh? If you want a pet in life and you can't decide what you want, get chickens. Every time, get chickens. Why chickens, Riyadh, huh? What, what the fuck? What a weird pet to get. They are so friendly, you wouldn't believe. You can cuddle a chicken, you can pet a chicken, you can feed a chicken from your hand. Believe me, I had 10 at one stage as a kid. Forget about ponies, forget about puppies, forget about kittens, sea monkeys. Sea monkeys all over the place. I just wanted a chicken and my parents gave it to me and it was the best thing that I ever had in my life. It's simple. What does a chicken give you? Cuddles, love and eggs. What does a dog give you? Rabies, smell and shit. But I will never forget Sandra the chicken. Don't ever put a mood ring in your mouth in order to heat it up and make it change colour. I thought this, this shit, this shit is broken. It, hello? I was specifically trying to make myself feel sad and then feel happy and then feel angry and then feel bemused in order to make it change colour. Nothing. Put it in my mouth, took a deep breath in, the thing went down and got caught in my throat and I was running around the house going, I can't breathe. Got rushed to hospital and they were about to perform surgery on me when I vomited and with the vomit came up the fucking ring. Now the special part of this story is that it was St. Patrick's Day and I had one of those Shamrock shakes from McDonald's. I come celebrate. McDonald's is serving up the one and only Shamrock shake. They're tasty, cool, and delicious. So when I vomited, it looked like The Exorcist, only a little bit more gay. Gimme, gimme, gimme a man after midnight. Always wear protection. You're gonna be having a bit of fun. Never, ever risk it because what's gonna happen to you is. You're gonna get a rash, an absolutely innocent rash that's got nothing to do with anything. And instantly, you're gonna think, I have syphilis. It's chlamydia, guys. Dear Lord, it's herpes. Not only are you putting that person and yourself at risk, you're also messing with your head because every time you get a little cold, a little cough, 
a little bump or a lump, you're gonna think it's from the sex. Don't trust people who tell you other people's secrets. This is one of the biggest life lessons I have learned. We all know that person, the gossip of the group. They thrive and they love hearing about other people's business. But what they thrive on more is telling you about that person's business. Can I say that again? Business. Watch out for them. They'll hear a bit of a whisper, they'll hear a bit of gossip going down, and then bam, they're there in that corner listening in order to store it up and use it as a social currency to go, you never guess what I heard about Sandra. Why is this everyone Sandra today? The chicken, the gossip person? When you're trying to come on to someone in a public place, give them two looks. If they don't look back with bedroom eyes, give up. They're not into you. Happened on the tube the other day, I was staring at a guy, thought maybe that girl beside him is his friend, could be his girlfriend. Fuck it, I'll give it a go. So I was all... The guy looks, he looks away. I go, okay, I got one more attempt. I go... He looks, he looks away. He grabs his girlfriend's hand at a stop that definitely wasn't the stop they wanted to get off on. And he marches both of them off the train to get away from the psychopath sitting opposite them, Riyadh Caliph. Give it two attempts and then quit. If you're going to the beach and you're a kid or you've got a nephew or you've got a little brother or sister, don't bring any of the animals home. They will die. There is never a world or a place where those animals are going to survive and flourish in your shitty little plastic container. Spare the child the trauma of having to watch their newly found pets perish in front of their eyes mere hours after they've left the fucking beach. So you know, catch the animals, put them in a little bucket, have a look at them, maybe pick them up, maybe don't, and then put them back in the water. I can't tell you how many sand eels, rock shrimp, mollusks, 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 yeah, that have perished under the the care of Riyadh. It's just horrific. No matter what they tell you, you don't need eight hours sleep. You can function on seven, five is okay, and you know what, you can probably survive on two. The most important thing you can do in the morning, it's doing a shit. Give your body time to wake up. There is nothing worse than getting up out of bed, rushing out the door, and you're midway to college, school, or work, and you go, I've got to drop a steamy one. Personally, I find if I wake up, I give myself about 45 minutes or so, and then you feel it. You feel your body going, oh yeah, we're about to have a mass evacuation. Are you ready? Because we are. You do it and then you're walking on air for the rest of the day. And I think it's only when you reach your mid twenties that you start to really appreciate a good poop. It's like, <laughs> leave home, travel as much as you can. Whether you believe it or not, the place that you were brought up and the place where you're born is probably not the place that you're designed to be for the rest of your life. I only learned that when I came to London and I looked around and I was like, shit, this is where I fit. I finally felt like I fit. I can dress how I want, I can walk how I want, I can talk how I want, I can get great business, the boys here are gorgeous. You won't know that until you go and visit, so take a little trip. And if you find that at the end of it, the place that you are born is the place that you love most, then fantastic. There is no rush for you to have sex. There's a lot of it coming. Feel it there? Take your time. If all the people around you are having loads of sex, then great, congratulations, woohoo, penetration. For me, I was looking around at teenage discos and all of my mates, when we were about 13, 14, 15, they were kissing people, they were doing other things to each other, and I felt like, oh, oh shit, I'm meant to do that. So, you know, I grabbed the nearest girl because, you know, there were no, there were no boys around for me to kiss. And you know, we, we made out and we kissed and it was horrific. Two suction pads, just the tongues going in a washing machine and saliva then dribbling down. And I remember her name, thank you for being my first kiss, Julianne in Wesley Teenage Disco. I will never forget Julianne. In this life, take what you want, don't wait for it to be given to you. I'm talking mainly about your dreams, your passions, your aspirations, your, your job. There is no big dream in this world that can be achieved by sitting around and just waiting. There is no person that's going to be actively working in order to give you something. Whatever you want in this world, it's pretty much attainable. You just gotta find out your step-by-step -step plan to get there and the best way I think you could do that is by looking at people that have gone before you and going, hmm, they have the dream that I want. What did they do in order to get there? And just imitate them. Just do the exact same thing that they did. And if it means that you gotta call them up, you gotta email them, you gotta hunt them down and find out where they are to ask them, then do that. And that is your first step towards taking 
what you want rather than waiting for it to be given to you. And the next thing is related to that and that's education. If you fail in your exams, if you're shit in school, it's not the end of the world. You will most likely be fine unless you want to be a doctor because then you really need to know your shit. What I'd say is watch this video that I made. It's a fully rounded synopsis of why education isn't the only thing that defines who you are because there's more intelligences out there that you aren't tested for. Money, spend it, use it, get rid of it, be sensible, but if there's something that you like, buy it. You could be dead tomorrow. Think of it that way. And you have all that money that you haven't spent. What a waste. Don't buy all of the things, but, but treat yourself. Buy a fucking lamp. I, like, I did, I did not need that. And I didn't have the money for it. Did I buy it? Of course I did. And look, the best thing is, look, look. It's got a little touch button. Boop. I mean, I could be there all day. I could literally be there all day doing that. Now, isn't that just reason enough to buy the thing? Huh? Look at it. Take real pictures. I'm talking about, you know, the real ones, you know, they're physical, they're not in a computer screen. They will last for longer than something that could be destroyed on a cloud or something like that. All of my pictures that I had from school and from my early teenage years are pretty much gone because they were on fucking Bebo. Where is Bebo now? It doesn't exist and I can't get my pictures back and it's breaking my heart. Once a year, pick your 10 favorite pictures and just go and get them printed and put them somewhere safe. If you wanna send nude pictures, I applaud you. Do it, but just Jesus Christ, don't put your face in the picture. Doesn't it, it sounds it sound simple, doesn't it? But you, the amount of people that bypass that vital, vital step. When you're drinking and you start to feel great, stop drinking at that point because it's only downhill from there. You start off pretty much sober. Oh, a little bit tipsy, I'm feeling fuzzy and horny, hello. And you're getting up and up and up. Oh, I'm so talkative. This is great. Look, let, let's dance, fuck it. More shots, anyone? Down, down, down. Kebab, vomiting, forgetting your name. You can't believe what you just said to your boss. You know, you get back, you're lying in your bed. The room is spinning. You're feeling shitter than shit. And you go, you know what? I'm going to expel some stomach acid to the side of the bed whilst forgetting that your little brother is sleeping on the floor by the side of the bed you then proceed to in the darkness vomit all over your younger sibling unforgivable ryan i i will always always be sorry for that incident <laughs> If you really, really like that guy, you know, like you, you next level like them, as in you would lick them from head to toe. Do one thing. Try and annoy the shit out of them. Do the most annoying, ridiculous thing that you can think of. If they stick around, they're a keeper. Linking on from that, if the guy you like is taking two or three days to text you back, just swallow your pride and realize that he's just not that into you. And he probably never will be because men tend to make their decision whether they're attracted to you or not in the first few seconds that they lay their eyes on you and then that's it. So just put a nail in it and move on because there are over three billion other fellas out there that could be your Prince Charming. Hug and kiss both your parents as much as you possibly can because believe it or not, they're gonna be dead. Sorry, that's really morbid. <laughs> they are, they're gonna die and you're gonna be like, fuck, I didn't hug them enough. I didn't kiss them enough and tell them I love them enough. So just shower them in love and affection and get them to do the same to you. If you're a family that isn't touchy-feely, break down those barriers. Just lunge at them. Hope that they don't hit you in the process out of reflex. You wouldn't exist if your birth givers didn't decide that night after watching Rocky and having a couple of cans of cider that they were gonna do the do and make you. Get comfortable in your own company and more importantly, get comfortable being single, it's okay. What I've realized in the last year is that, you know what, it's not a failure if I don't have a boyfriend. It's not a sad thing if I don't have a boyfriend. I'm just living. I'm living and I'm loving everything. My work, my friends. So, you know, you don't depend on another person for your happiness. If you're a happy, well-rounded person as is, then you're gonna be more ready to jump into a relationship when that person raises their head and comes into your life. Don't use a metal knife to take your toast out of the toaster. You will die. Comparing yourself to someone else and their abilities and their achievements is just gonna make you go insane. No matter how hard you try, you are stuck with you. And that is a beautiful thing because no one else can be you. For years and years, and I know he's gonna be totally fine with me telling this story. He's a really good friend of mine, Stephen. He's a TV presenter back in Ireland. And I remember I was sitting in bed sick one day from school and I flicked on the TV and Stephen was there hosting a TV show 
for the first time and I just started crying. <laughs> I don't think he knows this. And I called my mom up, I was like, Mom! She came up, she goes, what's wrong? He's on the TV and I am not. I am a failure, I will never get to do this thing. And he's gotten to do it and th 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 it's just bullshit and wasted energy and wasted emotion on something that is completely out of your hands. And hey ho, look at us about six, seven years later. Stephen is killing it in Ireland on TV. Absolutely killing it. And I'm here and I just landed my own TV show. I mean, the world works in mysterious ways. And I think once we stop worrying about what other people are doing, and support them and be happy for them and then just work on ourselves then amazing things can happen. Those are the 25 life lessons of Riyadh. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment below your life lessons, whatever they are, how crazy they are. And my favorite one, I'm going to pin to the top. So um, get commenting, get liking, and I will see you in a couple of days. Big love and happy Christmas. Happy early Christmas to you.